Abhishek Yadav, and in this tutorial, I'll be telling you how to connect an HTML page to the SQLite database server. To begin with, first of all, you have to download this DB browser for SQLite from this website, sqlitebrowser.org. You can go to, you can download either the Windows 64-bit version, which you get installed in your C directory, or you can download the portable versions. I prefer the portable versions because they don't create the registry files and don't affect the performance of the PC. So to begin with, download the portable version of this SQLite browser. And after you have downloaded, it will be uh, downloaded. It will look like this SQLite portable browser version 3.8. And this is a, actually a database browser viewer. So you can view your database files with this browser without any command line. It's a GUI browser for database. After you have downloaded this DB browser for SQLite and installed it, you have to download this XAMPP server which is actually a server, a small server application which is used to run the SQL, SQL and Apache servers on your PC which will be used to run the PHP script. To begin with, uh, first of all download the XAMPP server from this website, this 32-bit uh, of version 7.06 of the XAMPP server. Even if you are using 64-bit, uh, you, you can download the 32-bit, it works quite fine. After you have downloaded this XAMPP server Windows 32-bit, install it. During the installation, just begin with, with the normal procedure. And after the end of the installation, you will get a small error like you don't have uh, some user administration rights or you need to activate those to uh, use the XAMPP server. Just ignore that message and continue with installation. Uh, once installed, open the XAMPP server. And on the XAMPP server page, you will see this. There actually, it will open like this. There will be diff different modules and the start actions on the right hand side. Activate the Apache server the S and the SQL server. Once activated, the modules will turn green, indicating that these services are running fine. Now, to begin with, go to your C drive, XAMPP which will be the default directory for the XAMPP installation and in case which is my C drive and in this go to this htdocs folder because all the PHP files related to HTML documents should be created in this htdocs folder go to this htdocs folder and create another folder add emp like you can call it you can rename it to whatever name you want just create a folder named add emp and in this add emp first of all uh, now and just create this folder after creation of this folder you need to do a small change in the apache configuration go to this configuration open the xamp control go in the configuration files go to this php.inf file and open it on clicking it it will open a notepad file in which there will be multiple uh, dialogs with a semicolon in the beginning. Just press Ctrl F for, to open the file in the menu. Type L I T E light and click on Find Next. Find Next, and here you will find a text written such as extensions equal to PHP underscore SQLite 3 dot DLL, and if you, uh, and there will be a semicolon before it. So you just need to remove this semicolon and save the file so that this SQLite 3.0 extension get activated in the Apache server. After doing that, just stop your Apache server for once and restart it so that the new configuration files can take place. Now to create the server, uh, to make your file, copy this test.php configuration file from the Google Drive link given below and paste it in this add emp folder which you created in the htdocs folder of the XAMPP. Now this is a PHP file. Uh, this is a PHP file which creates a database test.dp which is if not present in the folder otherwise if it is already present it will create a table with id, name, age, address and salary. 
with these four columns and their properties written on this side and once this database is created it will display a message table created successfully to open this PHP files if you normally open this PHP file it won't run directly even if you uh, open with that if you open with browser to open this you have to use a special URL that will be localhost slash add EMP that will be the folder name space with the and after the add EMP you have to type test dot PHP so when you load that web page with the PHP file it will display the message open database successfully table created successfully so once you run this PHP file with this localhost URL you will observe that after running this PHP there will be a test.db file created in your add EMP folder to view that file just open with and db browser if it's not visible in your this list click on choose another app more apps and from there also you can select uh, your db browser if it's not visible open this test.db and it opens this db browser for sqlite in which you can uh, see the table created name with the name company and these are all the values and by clicking on browser data you can see that the table is actually blank right now so the database actually doesn't contain any values right now to create the values I have created another PHP file with the name insert.php whose link is also on the Google Drive open this PHP and you can see that this is the PHP file for this uh, the PHP file the first part of the PHP code uh, checks for whether the database is there or not and if not uh, and if it's there it will display a message open uh, database successfully and this question mark with the closing signs indicate that this PHP script has handed over in this block now there is another block in the center tag which is actually your HTML code that will be accepting the values from the user and this browser in this form I have created three columns name with its proper with its value accepting boxes name age email and message so this is basically a sample feedback form which will be accepting values from the user and storing in the database and at the end i've created a submit button with the title submit on it after that i've just created small space so that in case any error pop up it's not visible on the browser after that I have again continued with the same PHP script in which I have uh, stored this name variable which we accepted in a name variable, age in a, an age variable, email in an email variable and message in a message variable. Now to write these values back into the database I have write, written this SQL line in which I will be executing this query insert into company that's the name of the table with ID, name, age, address and salary in the salary one I am passing the which, uh, parameter message so it doesn't change anything values in the value one is just a value we are passing name we are passing the value of the name variable the age variable email variable and the message variable and after that we are just passing on this message the record created successfully which will be displayed if the values are written correctly in the browser and no errors are given so going back to our file place the insert.php uh, PHP file in the same add EMP folder in the HT docs and open the browser add the same use the same URL you used earlier for the test.php and here instead of not text.php we will be using the file name insert.php run that file and you can see this is the HTML page that pops up which is actually the code written in the PHP file in this you have to enter the values like I'll be entering my name in the name column age in the age column and in the email address I'll be entering my email address and the message you can change the properties of this HTML page from the PHP script to whatever background image footer header and whatever else you want from that PHP script this is database 
and just click on the submit button once submit you click on the submit button the database is written back to the database file and it the forms automatically reset now to check whether the database has been written into the file or not you open this again database.db file and you notice that once after you have opened this file you can see there is a record entry with the entries I provided so actually this, this web page act as a feedback form in which your user will be entering the details or the feedback and after every submission button the data will be stored in the database file and the admin can open this database file and retrieve the records so the values are returned into it there is a small anomaly in this file that if in case like this is the form if I like refresh it again reload it again so in the database browser and you refresh it you will notice that the same entry is written three times so that means even after you reload the page the previous values get written into the database which is actually a, uh, you know, a problem which I am not able to solve right now because uh, the buffer is not uh, clearing upon itself in the uh, Chrome and the other browsers so that's not much for a problem right now so uh, we have created a web page submitting the value we are submitting the value back into the database we can view the values stored in the database and to retrieve those values from the database the is another PHP file which you can modify according to yourself which I will be uploading on the drive as well in which you will be again opening the database and selecting the rows and selecting all the columns and rows from this select rows and all the columns from the table name and displaying it back on the screen so this is the again another script select.php which you can use uh, to view all the de detailed data from the database back into the browser so this was all much about the HT SQLite browser thank you for watching this tutorial and if you have any doubt do message me or leave a comment below thank you